Lesson 5.5, Solving Systems of Equations Algebraically. This is the final lesson in Unit 5. A solution of linear quadratic system of equations is an ordered pair x, y that satisfies both equations in the system. The system we'll see could have 0, 1, or 2 solutions. So what we're looking at in this lesson right away is we just want to see what happens when you have a quadratic and a line meet. What are the different possible outcomes? In the second part of this lesson, we'll be looking at what happens when you have two quadratics. How many different solutions can you have there? And keep in mind what solution means. A solution is basically just when a graph crosses one another. Basically when they satisfy both graphs. That makes a solution. So one opportunity that we can have is we can have, uh, let's say, a quadratic like so. And we can have a line like so that never meet one another. When that happens, we would say that we have zero solutions. Okay, so that's one scenario. Second scenario we can have is we can have a quadratic. And let's say we have a line that just meets at one point. Let's say that point is right here that I highlight with that um, dot. All right, we would say that this one has one solution. Okay, and we can have a quadratic like so and a line that crosses it right there where we would have one and two possible solutions. Okay. And so a solution is just an ordered pair. What we're going to do now is algebraically, that's what the lesson's all about, we're going to try and figure out what these ordered pairs are. So the scenario we have here, hopefully you notice that this one is a quadratic, and this one is a linear equation. We're going to see where these cross, or if they indeed cross at all. So to do this, we're going to recall on what we learned uh, in grade 10 uh, on substitution. That's how we're going to go about or, uh, solving the system. So to use substitution, what I'm going to do is I'll first label these equations as 1 and 2. And I'm going to take equation 2, and I'm going to rearrange it for one of the variables. The variable I'm going to choose to rearrange it for is, uh, I don't know, let's use y. It really doesn't make any difference. I'm going to make y equal to negative x minus 3. So when I take that and I substitute into the other equation, what I'm going to do is everywhere that I see a y, like right there, I'm going to substitute into that y, negative x minus 3. Okay, so I'll make a little note about that right here. I'm going to sub equation 2 into equation 1 right here. So this becomes negative x minus 3, so I'll put brackets just because I've noted that I've substituted in for that y, is equal to 1 third x squared minus 3. From here now, it's just a matter of trying to get everything to one side of the equation and then solving this quadratic. So to do this, uh, I'll note that we have two negative threes on both sides of the equation, so those will cancel. I'll bring the x to the other side, so now we have zero is equal to one-third x squared plus x. Okay, from here, we need to use our, uh, our factoring skills. Uh, try to notice if there's anything you can factor out immediately. You can factor out an x. We have zero is equal to x, all multiplied by one-third x, plus 1. Okay. Now, each one of those factors we can set equal to 0. x equals 0, that one's good to go already, so I can circle that. And the other one would be 1 third x plus 1 is equal to 0. This one might take a little bit of work. All right, so these are our two solutions. We have 1 third x would now be equal to negative 1. And then in order to isolate the x right here, what you do is you multiply both sides of the equation by 3. Those cancel. x is equal to negative 3. So those are our two x-coordinates of the graph. We need to now find out what the possible y-coordinates could be. Okay. So I'll make a note here. To determine y sub solutions into an original equation. All right, so when you substitute it into, into the original equation, uh, you can use whichever one you like. Uh, for this one, there's quite obviously one that's easier than the other, and that's the one that has x plus uh, y is equal to negative 3. So that's the one that I'm going to advocate using down here. So I have x plus y equals negative 3. And I'll write it just over here as well, because we're going to do it with both of these. So the first one, the first solution that we found was x is equal to 0. So when I substitute that in, I have 0 plus y is equal to negative 3. That tells me y is equal to negative 3. And so therefore, one of my solutions, one of my ordered pairs, where this crosses is at 0, negative 3, like so. Okay. The other one, we are going to substitute in negative 3 for x. We have negative 3 plus y is equal to negative 3. When I add 3 to both sides of the equation, you get y is equal to 0. 
So my other ordered pair would be at negative 3, 0. So this is a scenario where you would have a quadratic and a line crossing it in two points because we got two final solutions, 1 and 2. Okay. Let's go on to the next page. Now what we're going to ide uh, identify is what happens when you have two quadratics. All right? What are the different scenarios that we can have there? How many solutions could you have? A solution of a quadratic quadratic system of equations is an ordered pair, x, y, that satisfies both equations in the system. The system may have 0, 1, 2, or infinite solutions. So let's take a look at these possibilities. The first one we have here would be zero solutions. You could have a quadratic like 1 and 2. Those are never going to cross, so therefore they have zero solutions. So often people, when they try to solve one of these, they'll be kind of confused. They may think that they've made an error. Um, it is possible for them to have no solutions. All right. Second one, you could have one solution. That would mean when you have a quadratic like so, and like so, it's tough to sketch this, but let's say they just meet at this one little point right there. That would have one solution. Okay. The next scenario is we could have two solutions. That would be a quadratic like so, and then another one like that. Notice that we have one, two solutions. Now, the next one's a little strange. Uh, next one does have infinite solutions. And that's basically when both of the graphs are the same. So let's say we have one quadratic like so, and then I have another quadratic that's just right underneath it. Well, those cross at an infinite amount of times, right? Because they're really just the same graph, so we would say it has infinite solutions. Let's take an example uh, of one of these where we have two quadratics and solve these. So again, I'm going to use the substitution method. I will label this as equation one and equation two. I'm going to take one equation and substitute into the other. So for this one, let's go and substitute. Uh, let's go equation two into one. Now this one's nice, it's, it's ready to go. Why I say that is notice that one of the variables is isolated in both of those. So that tells me that I can just take this y, the second equation, and put it right into that one. So I will now have x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to x plus 2 all squared minus 1. The whole idea of um, substituting is that we want to get rid of the one of the variables. We've gotten rid of the y variable, and so now that'll make it possible for us to solve for x. From here now we have x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to, I'm going to FOIL this all out, this gives me x plus 2, recall, all multiplied by x plus 2. Often students want to tell me that's just x squared plus 4 and you'll see that it's not. So when I use my distributive property and I FOIL this out, I have x times x is x squared, x times 2 is 2x, and then 2 times x gives me another 2x, so both of those 2x's give me 4x, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1. Gathering my like terms, now I have x squared minus 4x minus 5 on the left hand side of the equation is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 3 on the right side. Now noticing that these are exactly the same, those will cancel out. Uh, I will now bring, let's say, my x's to the right hand side of the equation, so I'll add 4x to both sides, that gives me 8x. Subtracting 3 from both sides, I now have negative 8. That tells me when I divide by 8 right here, that I have a solution at x equals negative 1. Okay. So that's my x-coordinate. Right. Now if I want to find my y-coordinate, here's what I'll do. To determine y, what are we going to do? We're going to sub in x equals negative 1 into either equation. Try to pick the one that you think is the easiest. Uh, for this one, I'm not really sure it matters, so the equation I will use, I'll use equation 1. Uh, it's, it was, uh, what was it, y equals x plus 2 all squared minus 1. When you substitute that in, you get y is equal to negative 1 plus 2 all squared minus 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. We have 1 minus 1 equals 0, like so. And so we found out that your solution now, when you combine the two highlighted blue regions there, you get a solution at negative 1, 0. Now, what's interesting about this, and this goes for this entire unit, is now that you have that one solution, negative 1, 0, if you go and put it back into this equation, okay, it should satisfy it, and if you put it into this equation, it should satisfy it. What I mean by that is that the left-hand side and the right-hand side should be equal. Okay? 
So since we just had one ordered pair here, we know that this was the uh, situation that we had where this was just crossing at one point. And uh, that basically concludes this lesson and this unit.